Joe Ryan and the Minnesota Twins 18 and 11 so far in this young season a big series a three game set with the Houston Astros Do Young Park joining me now uh, Twins beat reporter for MLB.com and this is a big series we like to say even though it is a bit cliche you know kind of a benchmark series or a measuring stick uh, what's your take on these next three games Do Young. Yeah, it's going to be really important. I think we saw one of those series a week or so ago against Tampa Bay when the Twins went into the trough and took two of three. But I think at the same time, you know, the offense has still been stumbling into this series a bit. Uh, nobody's really gotten going fully. And I think uh, this series against an Astros pitching staff that has been otherworldly against a tried and true Astros team. Um, and at the same time, a warm series at Target Field, which uh, they haven't really had all this year. I think this is another opportunity to really see, you know, can this offense continue to build on what it's been doing? Can the guys continue to get healthy? And like you said, another measuring stick against one of the unquestioned elites of the game over the last couple of years. Yeah, the weather has wreaked havoc on the Midwest and the Northeast. It'll be nice to get some warm weather there. I think the biggest question everybody has, Do Young, is what are the updates on Carlos Correa after being hit twice in that finger, as well as Byron Buxton? What's going on with them? So I think we're assuming all went well. I believe we're expecting Buxton back for this series, if not today. Uh, we still don't have a lineup yet. But when we last talked to him, he said he had no worry about the hip that kept him out for a game. As far as Correa goes, we last checked in with him before the off day, and he said that it's just not realistic for him to play in today's series opener. Um, and just all along, both Correa and the Twins have spoken for the need to keep emotions out of it and uh, just do what he needs to do with the injury. Obviously, he wants to be out there, and I think there's still a chance that we see him uh, maybe Thursday. But I think uh, what's really going to be telling is he took swings for the first time, dry swings and off a tee yesterday. That was the plan. And I think how he comes into today, again, I don't think he's going to play today, but I think uh, how he feels today, especially closer to game time, is really going to dictate what the course of the next two days looks like for him. Yeah, the game and the Twins are better with those two in the lineup. I want to ask you what you've noticed, a front row seat from the Twins, despite having some COVID issues. This is a team that, as you know, started off the season 5-8. and eight. They're 14 of their last 17. It's the best record in the majors during that time. What's clicked? Well, I think the depth of the team is really starting to show. And uh, Derek Falvey and Thad Levine have really built their team around depth in the last couple of years. And instead of veteran depth all over the place, it's really young depth that's stepping up here um, in a really, really big way that I don't know that a lot of us expected coming into this year. On the pitching side, the pitchers have been unexpectedly phenomenal. Um, and I think a lot of that is Joe Ryan, who Mark just mentioned earlier. Bailey Ober's hurt right now, but he's been pitching like he had last year. And Josh Winder, uh, the club's number six prospect, two starts into his career, has been a stalwart. Then in the bullpen, you got Joe Duran who's the hardest thrower in Twins history and has the makings of the bullpen ace for years to come. And then on the offense, even with guys like Buxton and Correa going down for periods, you have top prospects coming in and filling the gaps. It's not just stop gaps. It's guys like Royce Lewis, Jose Miranda, Trevor Larnick, Hilberto Celestino that have all come in and produced immediately. And that sort of depth is what you need. And again, these aren't just stop gap guys. These are the future pieces of the next five or six years. And they're also succeeding while getting valuable experience in there. And it's an exciting time to be a Twins fan that likes to watch these young prospects come up to be sure. Yeah, let's uh, brag a little bit about Royce Lewis. Of course, any opportunity that a young man can get called up, he'll take it. You don't want it to come to an injury to Carlos Correa. But this was the kid that was the number one pick by the Twins in, in 2017, the number one overall prospect for them, obviously. Uh, what's made him so special in, in the small sample size that you've seen? What have you liked? Well, I think what's so special is the physical tools that you see from him day in and day out. I mean, there have been questions about his ability to stick at shortstop, been making all the plays there, all the routine ones and some really nice ones with the glove as well. Uh, the bat was always going to be the question with him, I think. The athleticism was always there. But uh, there have been swing tweaks. There have been kind of toning down the swing. There have been inconsistent results in the minors. And, of course, the road to the majors is that he hadn't played a professional game in two years with the 2020 minor league shutdown down and with the 2021 torn ACL that kept him out the entire year and even before that in 19 the last time he was on the field I think it was just like a 630 OPS an A ball and a little taste of double A but he came back from the torn ACL after having done a lot of swing work tore up triple A and that started to translate already to the big leagues the fighter swing is paying off and obviously he's the, the twins loved him at 1-1 all those years ago because of the makeup and he's just already brought that special personality to the clubhouse he's a guy that the club wants to build around 
Um, I thought it would be a year or so before we saw him still. I think the roster crunch kind of played into that on the 40 man, but he's come up and he hasn't looked out of place at all. And uh, it may be a little ahead of schedule, but the twins certainly aren't going to say no to that. Yeah, three for 10 in his first uh, ABs there. And this is a kid that you said they want to build around. Carlos Correa, of course, is a free agent after this year. So perhaps he has a, a quick future there in, at the shortstop position. All right, Joe Ryan goes tonight. A great right-hander for the Twins, opposed by Justin Verlander. Another pretty good right-hander as well. Both of them with a 3-1 and one record. But Joe Ryan, a 1.69 earned run average. And Doe Young, I ask you this. He was the opening day starter for the Twins with only five career starts under his belt, but he has performed really well this year. Take me through that repertoire and, and what has been the best pitch for him this year. You know, the funny thing is when the Twins acquired him from the Rays in that Nelson Cruz trade last year, all we could hear about is this guy just throws nothing but fastballs. This guy's like 70, 80 percent fastballs. How does he do it? Can he continue to succeed at the big league level like that? Um, and the fastball is indeed his bread and butter pitch. It's not gonna like blow you away. It's like 91 to 94 miles an hour, but he comes at you with a really low release point and good extension. And it's just a really weird release honed from his years of water polo that makes it really tough for hitters to pick up and really gets on them. But the key to his success this year has really been the slider. And I think again, with the popular perception around baseball too, having been, this guy's a fastball only guy, can he keep it up? It's really the progress of the slide of the slider, the change up and the curveball. I think his slider usage is like multiplied by four or five from last year or something. And it's not just like a pitch that he's throwing in there to mix it up. It's an effective pitch that he's getting swings and misses with. Um, and that's a key part of his repertoire now. And I think, uh, you know, the league is obviously still kind of adjusting to the reports on him, I think. But at the same time, there's nothing about this stuff that suggests that this can't keep up. I mean, he was a fastball only guy that was having all sorts of success. And now you throw in all these other pitches. He's going to continue to adapt and uh, hasn't really been hit hard yet. Yeah, you will take 169 from your ace any day of the week. And Joe Ryan seems to be part of a rotation or a pitching staff rather that is very close knit. When you look at this club, there's a lot of guys in this rotation that have said, you know, they're very close to one another. They feel like they've been playing with one another for two years rather than two weeks. Cliche is, you know, it, it all is about good chemistry, but this team seems to have it. Yeah, I think it's kind of a couple savvy veteran pickups in there as well. I think that's Sonny Gray, Chris Archer, and Dylan Bundy really coming into the fold. I remember during spring training, I walked in and I saw – uh, Sonny Gray was throwing his first bullpen session, but like every pitcher, every starting pitcher on the 40 man roster was gathered around him on that spring training bullpen mound, just watching him. And I was asking about that and they were saying, yes, yeah, Sonny came over from Cincinnati. That's a thing they did in Cincinnati where it facilitates conversations between the starting pitchers. They all get to see what each other are working on. They get to ask, you know, how do you throw the changeup? How do you throw the slider? Oh, that's interesting. I'd never thought about that before. Things like that. And, uh, even when he's been on the sidelines with the uh, hamstring strain that kept him away until uh, until late last week, Gray, by all accounts, was just popping around the clubhouse, still an active part of that. He was buying things off Amazon Prime to, you know, uh, have have more fun in the clubhouse with the guys. And uh, Chris Archer, obviously, has been around the block. Uh, he, he remembers back in his early career when he was with Tampa Bay, David Price played that role of being really a glue guy where he was – Obviously, David Price with the Rays is phenomenal, but he's also important, stressing the importance of, you know, looking out for the younger guys. And this is a young rotation. You've got guys like Bailey Ober, Joe Ryan, and uh, Josh Winder really stepping up into those roles as well. But the one emphasis you get from all of them is that they're so close. It's not just the veterans teaching the young guys. The veterans have stuff to learn from the young guys as well. They just spend so much time around each other now, whether it's uh, in the clubhouse or in the dugout or in the bullpens watching each other. And I think that's really been a cool storyline to watch earlier. Yeah, eight months, eight solid months of being with this group every single day. Well, hopefully that continues to pay dividends. Hopefully Buxton and Correa get healthy soon. Do Young Park with uh, the Minnesota Twins, MLB.com. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.